Okay, so this is Ringwalk Media. It's fight week over in Manchester in the Ricky Hatton's major, major fight with Marco Barrera uh, back at the Manchester Arena. And we've got an absolute legend with us, Mickey Vans. Mickey, really, really good to see you again, mate. And you? Look after yourself, aren't you? I'm doing all right. Well, I'm all right for a fat boy. <laughs> well, listen, people who don't know you, um, and p please give us a little rundown as to what you used to do because you were Ricky's referee in many, many of his fights, weren't you? Yeah, I, I refereed uh, quite a few. I don't know how many, to be honest. Um, and people used to say, why, why am I the referee? Uh, so many of his fights. And I used to say to him, well, what do I do wrong? Um, and I don't do anything wrong. So it just so happened. There, there was other fighters that, that I refereed on the, the same amount of occasions, you know, on, on many occasions. Um, uh, and a clap wamba in France, and oh, the, 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 there's quite a few. Uh, and of course, Ricky. Well, you can't miss Ricky, can you? His fights were pretty much spectacular every time he went into the ring. Tell us about one of the favourite fights that you you uh, refereed for Rick. One of the favourites. Funny enough, it was it was an early one that he 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 had against, and I can't remember the guy now, Russian. Um, or a Russian name anyway, and it was it was one hell of a fight. And I th I thought Ricky had a chance of getting beaten, but he turned the kid over. And I thought, oh, that's he's arrived as a lad. He, he's he's here. Um, do you know what? When I used to stand in the ring, and and he would be doing his ring walk. And there was the, the, the music come on, and I, and, and I used to think, oh, this is great. And, and it would make me bounce. I used to think, oh, I'm ready now. I'm ready. I mean, I, you were nervous. You were, you're always nervous because otherwise you, you, you weren't, uh, you, you didn't know whether you were fit enough, whether you were right, whether you were in the right frame of mind. But when they used to sing that, what were it, Blue Moon or whatever it was? Yeah, Blue Moon and One Ricky yeah. Hatton. Yeah, and that was, I used to think, yeah, I'm ready, I'm waiting. Come on, let's have a great, you know. <laughs> and I, I hope he doesn't knock him out early or something like that. I want to be here for a long time. Now, I, I enjoy being in the ring. And you're going to be in the ring again this weekend, aren't you? You're going to referee Ricky's fight. I am, yeah. Um, it's not, it's, I'm officiating on it. Um, I'm sort of supervised. I know it's an, it's an exhibition, um, but it, it's uh, I've seen some exhibitions being a bit tasty myself, um, and yeah, it'd be great. It'd be great, especially at my age, well, getting, getting back. You know, getting back in there again. I was going to say it's going to be a fantastic atmosphere out there, and uh, oh, yeah, yeah. Um, I hope the I hope the same music's going on. They're here. I've seen the bands. They're actually here for the for the workout. They're going to start playing in a minute. <laughs> oh, brilliant! Yeah, it winds you up. You know, it's, it's it it gets you into a mode. But it's funny. We've we've followed Ricky sort of all this year because obviously he had a postponement. Um, a little while back, I think in June it was when he was supposed to fight before. But that kind of did him good because he just kind of had a little little sort of two three week break. And then went straight back into training camp. So he's in effect had four months of training. He is as fit as a fiddle right now, and he's looking good. I was so surprised when I saw when I walked in this morning and saw him, and I thought, "Gee, where's he's looking good?" And I saw him on the pads, and I thought, "Oh, he's he's really, really. I wish I were half as good. Really, he he does look great." Um, and he's going to have to be because Barrera. He's quite active in exhibitions, isn't he? He, he is, yeah, yeah, he, and of course he's got it upstairs, hasn't he, you know, and he's been around so long, he's 60 odd fights, um, well, he's had three or four world championships, yeah. um, and, and a legend, you know, and let's be fair, I remember Mickey Duff used to call them Mexican road sweepers, <laughs> oh, oh, he's no road sweeper. <laughs> Definitely not. And listen, um, this as a referee in, in the past, of course, big occasions. Um, we want to talk to you about the Floyd Mayweather fight over in Vegas. And I know it wasn't yourself; it was uh, George Cortez, wasn't Joe it? Cortez. Joe Cortez. Joe Cortez. Um, yeah. In our opinion, and I was actually at that fight as a as a mm -hmm. fan of boxing, of course. Um, he stopped Ricky from working inside, which ultimately cost him that, didn't it? Yeah, it did. And I personally thought, I mean. Uh, Joe's full of himself all the time anyway um, but I thought I thought he was very unfair 
if t that's putting it mildly. I won't say exactly what I thought, but <laughs> he, uh, he, he, he said that he did not want Mayweather getting beaten and I can, you can understand it to a, way, to a point, but you, you, you're a referee. You're not supposed to be biased. You know, you're straight down. I, I always said when I started refereeing, I was a pro fighter. I was an amateur fighter and I was a pro fighter. And I always said that because there were a couple of decisions that didn't go my way and I thought, uh, you know, that uh, I won them, um, which you do. And looking at right ups, uh, it, other people thought I did as well. And I said, I'm never going to have, or I hope, I'm never going to have anybody say that about my refereeing about my officiating, about about I was biased or whatever, because I have never been biased to anybody. If they win it, they win it. And I know what how disappointing it is when you give your all, pretty sure you've won it, and then the referee lifts the other guy's hand up and you think, uh, and it does go on, I, I think. I, that, well, you can prove it with Joe Cortez. He didn't want Ricky to win and that was it. No, he definitely didn't, and it, you know, back in those days, it was uh, a big, massive disappointment because Ricky had yeah. just obviously, you know, he's fought some of the best fighters in the world. And what about, you know, what, what about the the people, the public that he took over at Vegas? He put a few quid, a few dollars in their bloody pocket, yeah. and all. Not enough, by the sounds of it, unfortunately. <laughs> but um, listen, I mean, it's going to be a cracking night, and the fact that you're going to be back in there again in front of a packed-out Manchester arena, oh, it's things of dreams, isn't it, really? Yeah, it is. Yeah, yeah. It's, uh, I'm really looking forward to it, and I hope it lives up to uh, to expectations. Well, we know it will because we've seen him from start to finish this year training, and uh, it's started now. You can see it out in the gym. It's yeah. it's bedlam already, but that wouldn't be it. Wouldn't be Ricky if it wasn't bedlam, would it? No, that's right. No, he's um, he's a definite uh, a definite star. Yeah, and always will be. Mate, listen, it's incredibly privileged to speak to you and uh, we hope that you enjoy the night as much as we do. Yep, me too. Thank you, mate. Cheers.